In 1991, gamers were introduced to a new breed of futuristic racing games on the Super Nintendo with F-Zero. Taking full advantage of the SNES's Mode 7 chip, F-Zero provided an exhilarating ride driving hover vehicles that flew at hundreds of kilometers per hour. It was unlike any racing game people had played at the time, and it won the hearts of gamers worldwide. It would be about seven to eight years later that fans saw a new F-Zero installment, which released on the N64, called F-Zero X. This took full advantage of the N64 hardware by being one of the few games to run at 60 frames per second while also upping the number of racers from 4 to 30, and had more content overall. In 2001, F-Zero went portable as a launch day title for the Game Boy Advance with F-Zero Maximum Velocity. This was a soft reboot in a way, with brand new courses, brand new lore, and a brand new character roster. This really was a fantastic portable installment that showed the capabilities of the GBA while taking a chance to change up the staple courses and vehicles from the series. And in 2003, F-Zero would grace Nintendo's heavily underappreciated console, the GameCube, with F-Zero GX. This time, F-Zero was not being developed by Nintendo themselves, but actually Sega's Amusement Vision team that developed Super Monkey Ball as a launch title for the home console. And if the GameCube wasn't enough, they did a simultaneous release in the arcade with F-Zero AX, but more on that later. Today, I want to dive deeply into my review for F-Zero GX, so let's dive in. F-Zero GX is a game that is absolutely jam-packed with content. There's the traditional Grand Prix mode, as well as an actual story mode, which was a first for the series, alongside the typical time attack, practice, and versus mode for up to four players. First, let's dive into the Grand Prix mode. Grand Prix lets you choose from one of four difficulties, Novice, Standard, Expert, and the unlockable Master difficulty. If you're new to this series, I highly recommend Novice, as this game doesn't hold back difficulty-wise, but more on that in a bit. From here, there are three cups available at first, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, as well as two unlockable cups, Diamond and AX. Now, the character select screen will be bare at first, with only four of the classic racers being available in the beginning, but you can unlock the remaining racers as you keep playing through the game's modes. Each racer has unique attributes that affects the vehicle's body, boost, and grip, all of which are letter ranked from A through E, A being the best and E being the worst. Additionally, a vehicle's weight is important to look at as well, as this gives you an idea of what to expect handling-wise. Before entering a race, you can also tweak the acceleration and max speed of the vehicle for that race, which may come in handy depending on the vehicle selected, as well as the track that awaits. You can also change the vehicle and driver color here, which is a nice touch. Mechanically, F-Zero has always been about racing at exhilarating speeds while surviving the crazy track designs. Whipping around at over 900 kilometers an hour, you'd be surprised at how well the game handles. Controls are incredibly simple to grasp while also being very challenging to master. In traditional racing game fashion back in the day, the A button is the gas, the B is the brakes, funny that there's even a brake button in this game, the Y button is your boost power, and the L and R triggers allow you to use the air brake to pivot your vehicle left and right respectively. Additionally, the X and Z buttons can be held down to initiate an attack of sorts. Holding down the X button while pressing left or right on the analog stick lets you ram your opponent that's next to you while holding the Z button down when pressing left or right lets you spin your vehicle a few times, letting you try to damage opponents that are surrounding you. Introduced back in F-Zero X, this lets you take out your opponents from the remainder of the race if you can land a solid hit on them. Doing so will also net you some energy back, and knocking out five racers in a race will earn you an extra life. Yes, there are lives during your time tackling a cup, and depending on the difficulty will determine how many lives you will actually start with. You will earn points depending on the position you place per race, but F-Zero GX brings back the rival system. Here, the game will highlight who is the racer tailing you in the rankings, and if you can take them out in a race, you've increased your chances to hold your current rank in the event that you don't do as well in that race. Each rival that is knocked out will automatically highlight the next person down on the list, 
and it really makes for an addictive mechanic to try taking them out during races. Now, speaking of lives and overall aggression gameplay, let's touch base on your energy. So, much like the originals, you will have to keep an eye on your energy meter. There are purple energy stations around the tracks that you can drive over to replenish it, which is absolutely essential. Once you complete the first lap of a race, the boost mode will be available for your vehicle. Hitting the boost button will use a bit of energy, and learning how to strategically use the boost button and not run out of your energy completely is where the challenge resides. Additionally, there are yellow boost pads littered throughout courses that won't use your energy. Now, boosting is great and all, but the tracks will get more and more challenging with sharper turns to avoid boosting into or no barriers in the walls that can lead to you flying off course. Off course! Reach on. Which brings me to the next aspect, the tracks. Now, each cup consists of five races across various familiar locations within the series, as well as new locations. F-Zero is known for its iconic staple tracks like Mute City, Big Blue, Sand Ocean, and several others. However, with these returns also came brand new locales to race along, like Casino Palace and Aeropolis, to my personal favorites, Green Plant and Lightning. Each locale is brimming with character and really immerses you into the race further. Details like this massive fish jumping out of the quicksands of Sand Ocean in the backdrop, to the constant lightning bolts striking in the lightning courses, to the massive Roman-esque statue that oversees Casino Palace, it just oozes painstaking detail that really personifies the tracks. As you go through the cups, each track will have specific elements that the track focuses on. For example, one level within Green Plant will have you racing on a fairly traditional course, while another will have you racing inside a cylinder. The series has been known for having at least two different types of tracks per location in the game, and it builds on that here as well. Ultimately though, every track is masterfully crafted and really keeps you laser focused to avoid falling off course. Something that I thought was an interesting idea are the interviews that await upon completing a cup. Depending on the racer you chose, you can choose one of several questions for the racer to be questioned and answer. Your rivals are howling for revenge. They're all great racers, but they're second rank. Thank you for the interview. Something like this may seem minor, but it's a very cool addition that once again adds more personality to a game that's already oozing that. If you're hoping to see everything the Grand Prix has to offer, you're going to really have to master the game's brutal difficulty. As mentioned earlier, unlocking the fourth cup, Diamond Cup, will require you to complete the Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald Cups in standard difficulty within first place. But to unlock the AX Cup, or at least the tracks from this cup, you will need to complete all four cups on the Master Difficulty. Master Difficulty is where people will either immediately give up or go home and cry to their mommies. This isn't like a Souls games difficulty where it seems brutally challenging, but it's completely doable. No, F-Zero GX's Master Difficulty may very well be the hardest difficulty in gaming, period. This is where only the most dedicated of hardcore gamers will withstand the true definition of difficulty. Or, you could just bring your memory card to an F-Zero AX arcade machine and get the AX tracks by connecting the memory card to the machine. Although, good luck finding one of these. Heck, even in 2003, I never saw this. It honestly wasn't until my friend who went to New York Comic Con in 2022 sent me a picture of the F-Zero AX cabinet that was actually there and playable. I will say, I dedicated my time to this game when it first came out, and after three weeks of constantly playing this game, I was able to complete the master difficulty on every cup, to only then have my memory card thrown away by accident with the save data on there. So I did it all a second time because I'm a masochist. I have to say though, the AX Cups tracks are excellent as well and contains one of my favorite levels in the entire game, which is Outer Space. This level is visually stunning, it's an excellent track design, and the song is some serious hardcore techno that just is banging to listen to. Shifting gears, let's talk about the game's story mode. For the first time in the franchise's history, there is a legitimate story mode where players venture through insane missions across nine chapters. 
Playing as the famous bounty hunter Captain Falcon, you must take on missions ranging from outracing Samurai Goro across Red Canyon, to saving Jody from a self-destructing base, to even a heavily inspired speed mission in which Captain Falcon has a bomb stuck on the Blue Falcon and cannot drop below a certain speed or, well, you've seen this movie before. The game doesn't take the story too seriously, but rather just has fun with the source material and creates memorable missions out of it. Granted, the story is actually cohesive from start to finish, but I don't want to spoil it for those interested still. I have to say, the story mode is relentlessly difficult, and that's even on the easiest setting, which is normal mode. Missions are relatively short, but definitely expect to see the mission fail screen again, and again, and again. But when that moment occurs, when you finally succeed, it really provides a satisfaction that only the most challenging of games can provide. Also, I need to point out, there are two more harder difficulty settings for each chapter to unlock. Okay, so we've talked about the Grand Prix and story modes. What about the other modes? So time trial is your standard fare, race three laps and get the fastest time possible on any of the game's unlocked courses. Practice mode lets you choose any level as well and tweak settings like how many laps you'd like to race or just set it for free run and how many opponents you'd like to race against. Versus mode is also your standard two to four player competitive mode, which is always a fun time and the game runs perfectly in this. Aside from these game modes though, are the other content aspects. There's a gallery in which you can learn about every character's bio, listen to their theme song specifically created for the gallery mode, and unlock quirky videos for each character to watch here. There's a customized mode where you can access a shop to purchase new vehicles, new story chapters, and new vehicle parts, all using in-game ticket currency, which is acquired by finishing any Grand Prix Cup. And speaking of vehicle parts, you can buy these to actually build your own machine from scratch. Building a machine is incredibly simple, where you can simply just choose the body part, boost part, and cockpit, and all of these affect the stats and weight of your custom vehicle. The game automatically generates a name for the vehicle based on the part selected, and it is impressive to see just how many naming combinations they've created for this. You can also choose any unlocked character to be the pilot of your created machine. Additionally, there's an emblem editor in which you can create your own emblem designs to stick onto your machine or predefined machine. If you're not feeling too creative though, you can also just attach emblems that are pre-designed, like this very familiar mushroom. The amount of content in this game is honestly just staggering, and for a $50 release back in the day, this contained far more content than games nowadays that would nickel and dime you for every little aspect here. In terms of visuals, F-Zero GX is in another league altogether. It's very rare to come across a game that not only pushes the boundaries of a console's limitations, but exceeds it in a way where 20 years later is still an absolutely beautiful game to see in action. F-Zero GX is a rich, vibrant, and sharp looking game that shows from the moment the title screen starts. Running at a blistering 60 frames per second with up to 30 vehicles on screen, loads of visual effects and background animations happening, it really is a sight to behold. The amount of visual flair like the particle effects happening in the firefield stages, to the constant lightning effects within lightning, to the leaves of the green plant's tracks lifting off the course itself as you race by, it's that attention to detail that is simply superb. Racers actually animate when turning their vehicles, which realistically you'd only see in the result screen or replay mode. And even when the top six racers are displayed to the left of the HUD, their heads react based on whether they're boosting, they're almost dead, or they pass racers. Even in Chapter 5 of the Story Mode, where Captain Falcon has to save Jody, it shows both characters on the HUD in a single spot. Again, this is attention to detail that is simply exquisite. Even the game's story cutscenes are rendered incredibly well with excellent CGI for its time. The only thing to note is that some backdrops fade in as you approach them, but realistically, with what the game is showcasing visually, this doesn't even affect the experience at all. Ultimately, F-Zero GX is a technical marvel to behold, even two decades later. Audio-wise, F-Zero GX has some of the best audio on the GameCube. Composers Shoji Hitamori and Daiki Kasho crafted one of the most high-energy, banging soundtracks this console generation, taking original F-Zero themes and remixing them while also crafting brand new material that are instant standouts is just a chef's kiss. 
each course's song simply fits the thematic elements, and to further immerse you, the final lap has the song change a bit into a more intense variation of that song. If the music wasn't flawless enough though, the game's overall audio effects further wrap up this sublime package. The sound of the machine whizzing by you, the boost sound effect, the sound of dropping through the air, to even the announcer, it's literally an eargasm to be had. Fun fact, the announcer is voiced by Jack Merluzzi, who would later be the announcer for the heavily underappreciated F-Zero inspired Fast RMX on the Switch. Seriously though, this is one of those games that you just crank up the audio to the max and enjoy every moment of it. So typically I have a segment in the review where I cover some of the faults a game may have. However, F-Zero GX is the rare example of a game that is essentially absolute perfection. It's a masterfully crafted experience from start to finish that demands your attention and makes it near impossible to put down. Between its intense addictive gameplay loop, plethora of content, and masterclass audio and visual design, F-Zero GX is in a league of its own. Seeing the franchise evolve over the years from the SNES to the N64 to the Game Boy Advance and then the GameCube, the GameCube received the final home console installment still to this day 20 years later. There was one final F-Zero game that released in the GBA afterwards based on the anime series F-Zero GP Legend, but that would be the end of this gaming franchise as of today. That being said, F-Zero GX is a masterpiece through and through, and one of the most unforgettable racing experiences of all time. This game is the definition of perfection, and is an absolute essential for every GameCube owner out there. 